Hey everybody, this is the Gal Studio Roundup. Uh, these are all my Gal pieces and we're just going to go through them. And uh, we're even going to talk about pieces that I don't have. These are kind of in order, kind of, sort of, like when I got them and when they were made, kind of, sort of. And uh, I'll be throwing in there chronologically uh, some ones that I passed over that I didn't get that, that are worth talking about. And uh, one that I have on the way. So please stick around. Uh, we're not going to get too detailed. I'm just going to cover these lightly. I did a review on most of these, a full review already. And there's a few that I might still do a full review on. So just a brief overview of what I have so far and uh, Gal Studios products in general. So uh, stick around, please. So we'll start with the Mini SPA. This is stainless steel. This is one of my very first fidget pieces. And it's a four track, four ball slider with uh, two clicky buttons. And it has a pendant hole here, although I would never carry it as a pendant. Um, it's a little bit weird in the fact that it's uh, they skipped a magnet here, and I guess that's because the lanyard hole's there. So it's uh, it's not as strong as it could be in my opinion, but it's still pretty, pretty decent. Uh, and I did find out something really kind of neat about this. Uh, it was just within the last month or so, I guess. But uh, get the little trusty Swiss Army knife out here. Just totally by accident, I found out that the buttons are only held on by a. Uh, <laughs> there we go. The button and the clicky. Let's get this out of the way. So there's two clickers stacked. And then there's the plastic piece. Let's see if I can get this in focus for sure. Flip that over. Well, I had to glue one of those back in. It actually fell apart. That's how I discovered that these things are accessible. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, there's two clickers. I'm just leaving them in there because I think I tried it with one maybe and it wasn't uh, as strong. So, uh, you know, if you're a, uh, if you own a lathe, <coughs> Gavin Saxon, <coughs> Gavin, <coughs> excuse me, if you own a lathe, you could make buttons uh, out of Mokume or whatever for this easily and uh, switch them out and you'd have a pretty unique piece. So yeah, that was one of my first pieces and when I was looking back through these, I was uh, checking the prices that I paid on AliExpress and it kind of made me feel bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm going to discuss pricing at all because it's kind of irrelevant at this point. A lot of these things are hard to find now, but um, it's safe to say that only a few of these were over the $100 mark, and uh, we'll just leave it at that, but uh, yep, we'll go from there. So I didn't mention, uh, I should pop this apart too, if as long as it's not too difficult, I'll pop these apart and show you what's on the inside, but if it involves getting out the screwdrivers, I'm going to uh, leave it alone. But uh, the next one I want to talk about is one that I don't have, and it was called the, um, the Mini no, no, it was just called the Game Pad, as far as I know. And it's kind of based on this, really. Uh, they came out at about the same time, but you'll, you can really hardly find the Game Pad anywhere. The Game Pad is a bit like the Cashew, and that's why I'd be interested in seeing what one's like, because it's, it's just sort of an early version. But uh, it's uh, in the shape of a, sort of like a Cashew. And it has uh, Game Pads on it. Instead of just A and B buttons, it has a little D-Pad and a little, I forget what else, but... Yeah, the, the, the balls and the tracks are on arcs, so here is a picture of that. So, the next thing to talk about is the owl. And, um, yeah, this is one that I kind of looked at the price and was like, ooh. Well, it is unique. Um, I don't know that I ever did a full review on this or not. If you push this direction, it rotates with a little bit of resistance from some magnets underneath. If you flip this whole thing around and push it out to the end, it spins free. And in either direction, although this seems a little bit looser to do it on this in this direction, if you do it in this direction, yeah, that's more guided. You can just sort of have like a, a two-click slider. 
but uh, once you get used to it, you know, it's it was new at the time. Pivot sliders were, were kind of a very new thing, and I think this was one of the early versions. Uh, it's one of the only ones that use a bearing like that. Um, so it's kind of neat that way. But there you go. That is the Gal game, not gamepad, the Gal Owl is what we've always been calling it. The next one is called the Rifle, or at least that's my best guess at what the title was called. Uh, uh, it never worked quite like I thought it should. It had spherical magnets inside it that disintegrated, and nobody else seems to have had that problem but me. I replaced them with uh, cylindrical magnets and put some tape in there, and I'm going to have to do a review video just about this, I think, at some point in time. But this was uh, the V2, as far as I know. I don't really know what the V1 was about. But the V3, I know when it came out, it had something involving maybe a spring and uh, like an Allen wrench uh, type of head, an Allen headed type of screw up here to make some kind of adjustment. And it's all trying to imitate a semi automatic handgun, which doesn't do well at all. But it's interesting. Um, in, in this case, you have to have a lanyard attached to it with a short stem, so to speak. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's, it's awkward to hold. I couldn't find any other way to hold it, and I don't try to do any of the fancy tricks that other people do with it. Um, it's just a nice little clicker kind of a thing, almost. It's, I'm curious enough that uh, I skipped the V3, but the V4 is, has come out recently, and it is all mechanical. And I'm hot for mechanical stuff right now, so um, right now I'm going to stop and show you a few pictures of the V4, and we'll talk about it just a little bit. So that's uh, that's the V4, and it, this is the V2 again, and I think they're probably going to be about the same size and shape, but I'm really curious about the V4. Um, you saw that parts of the internals, all those guts look pretty darn neat to me. Um, looks like it'd be pretty highly modifiable, maybe. We'll see, because I have one on the way. But uh, that is it for that. So this is the rice ball, and... I had a hell of a thing time with this, really, when I got it. Uh, the magnets on the base were glued in. They weren't supposed to be. The magnets that connect in the middle, which are supposed to attract, that's what holds this together, were actually installed backwards, so they were opposing each other. And uh, I was missing the magnets if you pop off this plate, and that's if you have a version that lets you pop off this plate. Uh, there should be a room for three more magnets that are just a little bit smaller that you can take in or take out to make it modifiable but uh, it could be Gal Studio could be a copy I don't know I, I almost believe it's Gal just because they're it just I don't know but they seem to have come out with this version and advertised it as being all kinds of modular and everything and it really turned me on and like I got mine and it was missing parts and it was glued in wrong and it didn't match the video that it had and everything and I had to go through a lot of work to get this to work the way it should and um, Anyhow, I'm glad I did. I'm, it's a sample in the collection. It's an interesting mechanism. Um, if I pop it apart, it'd be horrible to put back together again, but I did do a video on this one. You can look that one up. This is one we're not gonna pop apart. But be aware that, um, you know, if you pay, this was close to 100 somewhere. Um, so if you see this now for 30, 35, it's either a copy or it's Gal uh, pawning off a cheaper version where they've glued things up so that you don't have complaints being sent to them about why doesn't this work or I think they made something that was just too complicated for the general audience and and decided that it was, wasn't worth the headache and decided to start gluing shit that used to be modifiable and, uh, and uh, so you got to be aware of what you're getting if you're gonna get one of these buyer beware and I think you can get this in uh, polycarbonate I believe so next is the MAG-U, or the M-A-G-U, and uh, it's sort of a levitation magnetic thing. Um, if it's too close together, then they attract. If it's apart, they repel. That's just a matter of spacing the magnets out so that uh, so it works like that. That's in fact how a lot of bathgate stuff works. 
you know, turn it one way and it pops open. So this is kind of interesting, except it was a horrible thing to hold on to because I had to add this paracord and it's really not meant to do that and it wasn't an easy thing to do. If I don't already have a video talking about that, I need to do a video about that. So I'm not going to take it apart and show you now, but I'll tell you that was hard and it's necessary. It's really hard to get a grip on. And when you do, you can pop it apart and do this. Or you can turn it like that. Now if I turn it backwards, it automatically starts to unwind. I need to put Loctite on there, but I never did. That tells you how much I've really played with this. I just never got around to it. Which is good anyhow, because I need to take it apart to show you on a video how I got the paracord in there. So, um, yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, but that leads me up to one that I want to talk about next. And it's, it's one that I do not have because I did not care about this one very much. And it's the same sort of thing. And it's called the, uh, the magnetic levitation. So let me show you some pictures of that right now. And then uh, we'll come back and talk about it a little bit. Now that thing operates the same way that this does, and the only thing that really turned me off about it was kind of its height. I imagine it's about this round, but the, that stem in the middle that sticks up, I mean, uh, if only it somehow was collapsible. I know mechanically that's not a reasonable thing to ask for, but um, it just looks too big for pocket carry, and I'm not too impressed with this one, to be honest, so I skipped over it. I decided not to get it. Um, and you know what else it reminded me of? And Somebody has to agree with me on this. The first thing I thought of when I saw it made me think of a childhood memory. I'm going to show it to you right now for a second or two. Did you have a sit and spin? Did you? I did. In fact, it's funny when I was looking through those, I, did, I looked up sit and spin on, on uh, Google and you know, I did an image search and uh, I just wondered to myself, I wonder if any one of these, because they're all different kind of colors, you know, and they still make them today, I think. And I was like, I wonder if I'll recognize the one that I had, and that's the one I had. So, um, yeah, it makes me think of a sit and spin. Uh, so that, and I just didn't care for it. So that was the, that was the magnetic levitation was the best name I could get for it from anybody. So now we're up to the, this is called the two things I've seen it called, the Rice Ball V2 and the Rice Ball Rocker, I think. And this is a winner. I'm surprised more people didn't uh, climb on board with this. I just never see anybody talk about it. Um, it has that characteristic that the Lauti Shuffle has. It's just a different, slightly different construction, I suppose. Uh, but uh, like I said in a previous video, Gao has a thing and a history with, uh, sort of an original history with using ball and tracks in arcs where nobody else really has. And uh, this one seems to work really well. I can. I can use it this way, and then sometimes I flip it around and use it this way. And it, that's pretty that's pretty snappy for a magnetic, I think. Uh, a lot snappier than any coins that I have, or much anything else I have, really. Uh, maybe conditions are just right. We'll take a brief look at the interior of this one. So you got some balls, and uh, you can take the balls out completely and I think I can do it like this and sort of demonstrate for you. You can sort of swing this around by itself, but we're not going to do that. I did do a full review on this. That's a pretty nice piece. That's worth having, I think. So now we're up to the cube. I used to call this the square. I thought that's how it was advertised. Um, it's a very nice friction, uh, free-floating slider there. Steel plates, wearing nicely, although I don't use it a lot. Um, it does pinch you from time to time, but it is a sweet, sweet uh, thing. And I wish that they'd, uh, this is a great opportunity for Gal to build on what they have. They could easily take this and make a more rectangular version. Uh, that's, that's, I've heard other people say that too. So that's something we all like to see. Um, this one's relatively easy to take apart and you can really modify it a lot if you want to. And I like the, the small magnets I haven't been able to find much of a use for. The current configuration is 3, 3, and 3, the big magnets. I'll show you in a second. Um, but the other configuration, I believe, for me, the only one that seemed worthwhile was to take out the corner magnets. And then you had sort of an ability to, to spin this around a little bit easier. 
uh, and yet it still performed a lot like it does when it has all the magnets in it. There, I got pinched a little bit. But uh, there's a hole in both sides, and you can use a sharp object. I'll use a pin to get started, and that'll pop this lid open. The very first thing I want to do is put this one back underneath to control these so they don't go anywhere. Um, but I wanted, to show, I wanted to show you what's in there, but I wanted to tell you something else weird about Gal Studio. But you can see there's holes for small magnets, and I just really haven't experimented with those very much. My first tries didn't seem to do much for me. Uh, and again, I think if you take out the corner ones, um, you can have an interesting effect. But these plates are available in all different kind of materials. I've seen uh, the, the clown metals to uh, Altum, everything in between. This is just stainless steel. And uh, what I was gonna say, one of the weird things about Gal Studios is they often include um, little pieces and then they don't tell you what it's for. So, and a lot of the times, at least with this and with this, I think that's it. Um, they both came with those extra little clicky domes and I'll show you in a minute what we'll do with them. Um, but I had no idea what to do with them and it didn't seem to work right at first. I, I, I finally came up with one that works pretty good. So. If you remember earlier that there's clicky buttons, clicky domes inside here, we're going to borrow those. Whoops, <laughs> they're stuck to the magnet, of course. And there's two, and that's nice because we need two. And I can't remember, I know that this came with at least two. It might have come with four. Either way, it would have needed to have come with four if this was their intention. I have no idea what their design intent was here. But you can put these in here. They'll stay in place because of the magnets. Um, I put them in the two corners. I've tried moving them down here to the middle and everything gets loose and wobbly. Um, I tried putting these two stacked in the middle and then it just wobbles all around. One by itself in the middle, the magnet pulls it down tight and it won't click at all. So like this is the best configuration I could come up with. and. You just pop this back on, and now you can see, probably, that it's a little bit ramped this way, but it's hardly perceivable. And now you have a clicker. But, like, I didn't discover that, at least the appropriate way to do it or to get it to work to where I was satisfied for quite a long time. Um, everything else was weird. Uh, like I said, if you put the put the domes in the middle, everything gets rocky and stuff, but with this, if you push it anywhere in the middle, it'll click, even though the, the domes are here and here, I believe, yeah. So, that's an interesting thing about that. Like I said, this one, this one, we'll talk about it next. Um, it came with domes, too. But yeah, yeah, you should get your hands on a cube. Um, if I haven't said it already, um, this is a golden opportunity for Gal to build on, on what they have I've heard other people say it. We'd like to see this in a rectangular format with maybe four magnets by four magnets and, you know, beside each other. Give us something nice to ladder with. Not that this doesn't ladder, but uh, that rectangular shape would mean a lot to a lot of us. So uh, there you go, gal, if you're listening. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. This is the Master Coin. Magnetic Master Coin, I believe it's called. There's a spinny part in the middle. The outside rotates. I find it easier to do the whole thing if it's upside down. I find it a lot easier, as a matter of fact. Um, there was a whole chart that came with different options for you to set this up, uh, magnet configurations and everything. I just settled on something pretty simple here. If it will permit me, I will try to take the cap off without having the balls go crazy on me. And I know this is not the appropriate way to do this, but if I can do it, that's not going to work for me, is it? I could just get a bite into there, and I'm going to end up scratching it. Okay, well, for everybody's benefit, I'm taking it apart. But you can see the balls go in there, and we got lucky. Balls and magnets, and you can put them in different configurations. Uh, doesn't seem to make too big of a difference to me, but uh, 
kind of an interesting piece. And the weird thing is, this came with two of those clicky buttons too. And I'll be damned if I know what to do with them. Um, I've tried putting them in underneath here, which is something we can do here. I'm going to put this back together again. Oh, we got lucky there. Let's pop this thing apart. Gosh, dang it. There we go. Oh, now the bottom wants to come out. To be careful. Yeah, I tried putting a clicky button here, and it just made the... Uh, it made this much, much, it sat too high and well, it didn't make good contact anymore. Just kind of ruined it. So I don't know why they put those in there. So I'd call this like an interesting coin, but overall not very, I don't know, rewarding. It's not, this is not one that had me going for it a lot after I bought it. It just, it's interesting, but I don't know, kind of scratchy, a little too. I'm more into the uh, precision of mechanical clickers nowadays. So there's that one. This is the Stainless Steel Mini SP, and I reviewed this in full as well. So it's mechanical, it's a hybrid mechanical magnetic haptic. Uh, it has uh, a dense array of clicks in one direction and a less dense array of clicks in the opposite direction. The buttons don't come off like they do on this one. Uh, they're pressed down in there, so it's, it's not something you're meant to be able to take apart again. Uh, this one's pretty easy to show off. Let's see. Yeah, let's hold it this way. So it's a four track, four ball slider, and it comes with uh, two of these ball plungers. I find it works best for me if I just have one in there, but you can put two in, one on each side. And then what I find that does is, is it like doubles the strength. It makes this twice as, as uh, hard to use, so to speak. So if you if you want something a little more firm, that would work for you. You cannot put three in here because it won't. They interfere with each other. You can only do one in the uh, two, one on each side, or one in the middle. And again, it has a lanyard to point attachment here, but I would never use that. There you see the detents, the dense and less dense that back together again. Um, interesting, very interesting piece. I love this. I really, really love this when I first got it. And of course, like I've said before, it's usually the latest, greatest thing. The, the latest thing I bought is always my, my favorite piece. And then I get something new and it's, it's kind of not my favorite piece anymore. <laughs> but I still love this one. It's great. Yeah, you should, you should probably get one of these. Now there's, don't get confused with there's a version of this they call it the same thing. It's called the Mini SP, and it's in PC, polycarbonate. But it's, it's, it looks like this, and I think it's this size and shape, but it's really more like this. Um, and it doesn't look like a good performer, but it's cheap, polycarbonate, clear. I'll show you a picture of that right now. So not unlike that one I just showed you, this is clear polycarbonate, and it is the first cashew that they came out with, and it's just called the magnetic cashew nut. It says it right on the side. Um, it's funny. There's the, the, the photos for these. Actually, this wasn't a photo. This was a disassembled uh, picture. I'm going to show that here in a second. Uh, it's funny how they show these pictures of things like this um, as though they were meant to be taken apart. Like they show a photo of this with this plate taken off and all the magnets coming out. In fact, there's like a stack of magnets in the guy's hand. Like you're supposed to be able to modify it in some way or other. But that's not the case at all. And that's, I'm not bitching about that. That's not why I bought this. That didn't catch me. Um, I wouldn't have expected that to be the case anyhow. It's so cheap. I think it wasn't very expensive, whatever it was. But um, most people agree that it's just, it's not very impressive. It would be great if you just needed a haptic sensation with like no virtually no audio and really virtually no haptic feedback. It's not very responsive. I, I, there are people who like it. I don't want to I don't want to shit on it terribly, but there are people that like it. I can understand. Um, there's a version of this that came out just a little bit after I bought this. That's three layers, and it just uses the same body pieces. They just made a middle piece that's kind of interesting, and I'm really tempted to get one. The, the fellow that, that, that's keen on this one, that's okay with it, he has a three-level one. 
he's he's pretty he's always told me every time I talk about these that he's uh, he's fond of it so I may just get that they're not too expensive get a red one that matches this one here um, but yeah that's the we'll show the inside of this there's it says giant five millimeter balls I think and one popped over in the other track so it's a four track four ball slider and that belongs over here so there you see tiny little magnets Not much going on there. This one is interesting. This is inexpensive, and it's a polycarbonate version of this with one slight difference. I'll tell you what that is in a second. But you got your clicky buttons, and you'd like to try that on this one for you, but these ones aren't very loud. <coughs> Excuse me. A little louder. These are the loudest of all, probably because it's plastic. But again, you have the aggressive side and the less aggressive side. But in this case, this is a hybrid mechanical slash magnetic. But in this case, when you're sliding in this direction, it's you're getting the mechanical and the magnetic side. When you slide this direction, it's magnetic only. I can show you that pretty quickly here. So... You can see there's four divots here, four detents, and over here they didn't even bother putting any detents. So when you slide it in one direction, this ball plunger hits those four, and then you're good to go. But if you slide this direction, it completely uh, ignores this ball plunger, and you're just getting haptic feedback from the magnets. So that's interesting, and I think they probably made the right choice there. Um, I'm sure they did testing and stuff and decided that was something good to do. And I did a review on this separately, so I don't want to go into too much detail, but if you want to get, um, for some reason, the only thing we can think of is that they put this on here to hide what is called the gate. That's where the, this is made by uh, plastic injection molding, so the plastic gets shot into the steel mold in high pressure and high temperature through a tiny little hole, and it usually leaves an ugly mark, and that's what that is, the gate. Sometimes they call it the sprue, but uh, there's another gate there. And then when you see little round circles like this on the bottom, those are probably push pins. So once it cooled off, those little pins pushed this out of the mold. Either way, um, that pops off. And I talk about something that can be done with that, too. I think I think I talked about that. Um, you know, in the event that I didn't, in the event that you missed it, let's talk about it. Um, this came from a comment on YouTube, and it was a really good comment. He said, why did they put this on there? And I'm like, well, I think it's to hide this, the the uh, the gate. You say, yeah, I think so too, but wouldn't it have been cool, he said, if you could use it more in order to store this, because he likes to use this. You don't have to, let's go ahead and pop these out. You don't have to have this ball plunger in there. You can take it out completely. And wouldn't it be cool if you could take it out, you just want to take it out, but you could store it by popping it in on this side in the opposite direction. And they could have done that so easily. All they would have had to do was put a little countersink in there for the lip. There's a little lip that uh, the ball plunger has on it that keeps it from falling through the hole the whole way. And if they had just put it on there, they could have flipped that over. And then this, you know, you'd still have the little ball sticking up a little bit. But then this piece, all they would have had to do was sort of mold a little detent right there so that there would be space for it. That way, if... It, you know, if the ball plunger was sticking upward, all you would do is take this and put it in. Now it's not going to fall out. It's upside down. This side would look flush and flat, and you could run this entirely uh, magnetic without the ball plunger at all. What am I doing? Oh, I forgot to put the balls in. So, yeah, wouldn't that be cool? And uh, they didn't do it, but I might. I might. It's not like uh, this was very expensive. I wouldn't want to ruin it, but... I think I can handle putting a countersink on the other side and a little detent on that black plastic piece. So we'll see where that goes. But anyhow, this is a cheap version of this, and uh, you want to get an introduction into mechanical, this would be a good place to start, I think. It's at least one of the good places to start. And it has a little lanyard hole if you want to carry it around your neck. 
Now before I get too far ahead of myself, I didn't neglect to say I wanted to show you some photos of what the three level version of this looked like. So let's do that right now. So isn't that neat? I mean, it, it looks like there's a flat piece uh, that only has partial grooves on it. So I'm kind of curious to see how that reacts and how it works and everything. Uh, again, we'll see. Because this thing's just awfully darn quiet. Okay. Last, but not really last, is the new mechanical cashew. And I'm in love with this thing. Uh, you have to learn how to hold it, I believe. And you have to decide what you like as far as... Uh, it's going to come with glass balls. Two glass balls here that I call friction balls. They run in the tracks on the inside. And then there's uh, another um, two glass balls that sit on top of springs in the middle here. And that's what gives you your, your feedback. But my preference was to put nylon balls in the friction the friction ball location. That's because it rides in the groove. And, uh, and I used stainless steel balls. I think that's what came with it were stainless steel. I tried the other balls and stuff. It's all in my review video about this. I go into detail. I take it apart and everything. But uh, you have to hold it just right. That's my thing. Um, don't give up on it. If you just get it, give yourself time with it. Once you figure out what you like and how to hold it, it's pretty sweet. Um, you know, it's based a lot like on the one pal design. Um, we're seeing a lot of this tongue and groove dovetail sort of thing um, and it works really well but uh, there's that and um, you know I wanted to talk about a couple things that I don't have and uh, one's really not that interesting and the other one is kind of almost unrelated um, but the first thing would be this new rich slider they're calling it the rich r-i-c-h slider and it's Gal Studio, but it's it's just polycarbonate. Doesn't look much bigger than one of these. Um, and they're only like fifteen dollars or something. But it's a four-track, four-ball slider with a row of magnets down the middle on both sides. And again, um, their photos, which I'm about to show you, have it. They show an exploded view, like oh look, you can take it apart and do things with it. But I'm I'm sure you can't. Just like you cannot do that with this. But uh, let's throw that up so you see what that looks like. I'm not going to be buying one of these. And the very last thing to talk about that I don't have, that I didn't get, that's still available out there, is a spinner. Gal Studio did a spinner, and it's called the the Milk Spinner, as near as I can tell. And it has uh, it's a it's a it's a bar spinner, and both sides have an internal part that pop out, and it rides on uh, balls on tracks and magnets. And that's about all I can tell you because I don't have one. I've only seen the pictures of it uh, taken apart and everything but uh, we'll end on that and uh, yeah I'd probably like to get one of those except that I spend all my money on these things nowadays I, I was a big spinner collector uh, when I started about five years ago and everything changed when we got into these things uh, this is more up my alley so and gal studio overall does a good job they're innovators they do some interesting things um, I'm really looking forward to the rifle version 4 or whatever it's going to be called now. That should be coming soon. And uh, we'll see what else they have in store for us. Hopefully someday they'll do a rectangular version of the cube. I don't even know what they could call it. But, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Again, here uh, ending this will be some pictures of the milk spinner. And um, if you have any questions... Leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As usual, thanks for watching. Bye.